Good morning everyone. So today we're out in our power shed and we're getting our Snyder system set up and uh, one of the things we need to do is we need to program our Classic 200 to pr properly charge our lithium battery. So one of the things we've done first is we've gone ahead and we've verified that the battery voltage on the screen matches the actual battery voltage with a, with a good fluke voltmeter. And we've done the same with our Snyder inverter. And that's really important to make sure that you've gone through and verified that, calibrated it if needed, um, on any equipment to see is no surprises. We've then gone and we found a sheet off in the battery manufacturer's website which shows us how to program a Morningstar charge controller. But they basically program the same. They didn't have one for midnight yet, so we'll, uh, we'll work with that. So we'll work with the, the Morningstar one and we're gonna go through, we're gonna program this. One of the things I wanna point out is this works for virtually any lithium battery. The important part here is the numbers you get from the manufacturer of the battery. So I'm not gonna dwell on that for mine because I don't want you to use my numbers. I want you to go get your own numbers for your own battery. What I'm really trying to do is show you how to program the classic properly and take care of a couple gutches that might sneak up on you that you hadn't thought of um, based on the documentation that comes with the battery. So we're gonna have Sue zoom in so you can see the display real well and see what I'm pushing for buttons. Okay, so we're gonna go into our main menu, which is on the classic is this bottom right button. And in our case, charge came up highlighted, but if it didn't, you just keep pressing the main menu button until charge comes up highlighted and you press enter. So now the first thing we wanna do is go into volts. And here we need to do a little math because the data sheet I have is actually in 12 volt. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to go into our main menu, the bottom right button on the classic, and we're going to want to get to the charge menu. So if the charge menu is not highlighted, we just keep pressing the main menu button until charge is highlighted, we press enter. So the first menu we're going to go into is volts. We're going to go into volts. Now here what we want to do is we're going to start over on float, because the way the classic works, if you try to bring equalize down first, it, it goes a little slower. It's just easier to come over to float. So in our case, on the Fortress, they're asking for 54.4. And then we go over to absorb, and we need 55.4. Now, what we're going to do here, this is one of those belt and suspender things, we're going to bring the equalized voltage down. Now on the classic you can only bring it down to one tenth of a volt above your absorb voltage. So we're going to bring equalized voltage down to 55.5. And what that's going to do basically, even though we're going to disable EQ in the EQ menu, if somebody gets mucking around and goes in there and starts a manual EQ for whatever reason, it's going to basically do another absorb charge. That's how we're going to program it. So we're going to save this by pressing the enter button right here in the middle. And then we're going to press the main menu button to back up. This is also a back button. And we're going to go to charge time by using the right arrow. Charge time. Now here, they want six minutes of absorb time. I believe the classic goes down to three. So I believe we're in good shape there. I think the classic limits at three. But let's get down there and see. So six minutes, and we'll run you down just so you can see. I believe it's, yeah, see at three minutes, when you go below three, it goes to 18 hours. So the minimum absorb time you can program on a classic is three minutes. So we're gonna set it for six, like they asked for. We're gonna run the equalize down as low as it'll go. I believe that goes to zero, but we'll find out together here in just a second. There we go. So we're going to save that. Okay, so the reason we brought our equalized voltage and time down is basically because all of our lithium batteries have a battery management system in a BMS. And if they see that voltage going too high or too low, they will open that BMS and disable the whole system. And when you have a running system like this with charge controllers and inverters and stuff, they don't really like to have the battery disconnected. Uh, the Midnight products seem to be okay with that. Some of the other products on the market don't like having the battery disconnected while they're running. It's just not a good place to be. So that's why we've gone ahead and we've brought our equalized voltage down and our equalized time down. So that if somebody does actually start a manual EQ by mistake, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's just gonna run up to the absorbed voltage, one tenth of a volt over. And 
as soon as it hits that, it's going to go right back to flow. Uh, the BMS, I believe, I don't know the voltage it trips at, but usually it's a half to a three quarters of a volt above, you know, what the uh, charging parameters are to give you a little headroom. So we're going to go ahead and zoom back in and show you how to finish the programming. We're going to press the main menu button once to back up. And we're going to go to T-Comp. T-Comp is another one of those belt and suspenders. So we do not want to T-Comp a lithium battery. T-Comp stands for temperature compensation. And on a typical lead acid battery, as the battery gets below 25 degrees C, we have to raise its voltage to charge it properly. As it gets above that, we have to lower its voltage. Lithium doesn't want that. So you'll notice when we went to, to zero millivolts, it goes to disabled. So that is now shut off temperature compensation. We're going to press enter to save that. The other thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to unplug our battery temperature sensor out of the Classic because it doesn't do anything anyways uh, when you're not using it. When this is disabled, it ignores the battery temperature sensor. So by unplugging it, again, if somebody comes in here and pushes some buttons or does some kind of factory restore or something, it won't automatically start using that battery temperature sensor and exceed the voltage set point. So we've done that. We've saved that. We're going to back out of that menu. We're going to go to EQ and it says EQ stopped. We're going to check auto EQ by pushing this upper right square little button right here underneath auto EQ. And we'll notice it's set for manual. So that means we've completely disabled EQ as much as possible. So we're going to press the main menu button once. We're going to press it again. And that's pretty much it. There's a couple things in here you can play with. Uh, there's a limits menu where you can set a charge controller output limit. In this case, it's 58 amps, a little, probably a little hard to see on camera. Um, we have two classics, so we're still well under the 150-ish amps that I think uh, this battery can, can handle. So we're in good shape. If you had a big system and you needed the current limit with the classics, you can use what's called a Whizbang Junior, and that will monitor the current into the battery, and you can do current limit on the classics using that Whizbang Junior, so it's much more accurate. This is the output of the charge controller. So if we was to drop this number down, this limits the charge controller output as a whole. So if your house was using, say, 30 amps of that, 28 amps of that could go to the battery. Whereas when we use it with the Whizbang Junior, if we tell it we want a 58 amp current limit, the Classics can put out more than that to power the loads in the house, but it will monitor what's going into the battery and regulate on that. So that's something to be aware of if the system gets big and you need that. Um, the other thing that you can get into that we don't have any programming data for, we don't actually use, but I know some people do use, is your uh, rebulk voltage and I, I don't you necessarily use it on a solar system, but if you have some questions or if you need to program it, this is where you program it right here, rebulk. You wouldn't use ending amps on a lithium that I know of, and skip days I doubt you'd use on a lithium either, unless it was an unattended system, then you might want to call the manufacturer of the battery and say, hey, uh, we're going to be walking away from this camp for six months this winter. Um, do you recommend that we only do an absorbed charge every so many days? And if they say yes, let's do one only every 10 days, then we're going to go ahead and set skip days for 10 days. And what that will do is every 10th day it'll do an absorb cycle. The nine days in between it'll be stay right and float. Um, ending amps we don't use. Rebulk is where we would set that if you wanted to set that for your lithium battery. So if they're telling you we need to rebulk, this is where you'd set that. And what that number is, is it's going to be below float voltage. So if a load in the house comes on, a big load, and draws the battery down lower, and it hits this number, it's going to initiate another absorb cycle for the day. So we don't worry about it, we leave it at 8, which basically disables it. That's pretty much it for programming your classics for your lithium battery. There's not a lot to it as you can see. Lithium tends to have this scary, or I think it's because it's, it's a new technology to a lot of people. They're not familiar with it. It makes them nervous. They hear stories of it. But most of the lithium that we've played with and we have researched all programs and charges similar to like an AGM battery. Uh, a little bit of common sense goes a long way with all of it. So, you know, not a lot to it. It's pretty straightforward. The biggest takeaway I can give you is to go to the battery manufacturer and get your parameters. That's the most important thing you can do. Uh, no matter what battery you have, if it's lead acid, lithium, salt water, it doesn't matter. You need to get those parameters for your specific battery and you need to plug them into your charge controller. 
So where, where if you get into issues, you know, you're having confusion on how to plug those in or how to translate those numbers, then what you want to do is you want to reach out to the manufacturer of equipment. You want to reach out to Snyder, Midnight, whoever, you know, makes the equipment you're trying to program. And when you've got all that information in front of you, those guys are going to be very helpful about walking you through how to set those parameters in there. Um, you don't want to call them if you don't have that information because they can't get that for you. For liability reasons, if you call up Snyder Electric and say, hey, I have a Walmart battery and I'm trying to program it you know program my Snyder inverter they're not going to give you numbers they're going to tell you you go get the numbers and call us back and we'll help you program that and that's basically to cover their own butt so if you didn't tell them the right specifics about your battery or they found the wrong data sheet for example um, they're not going to tell you wrong and cause a problem with your system. Uh, one of the fun things when I was researching this this morning a particular lithium battery um, we won't name the name but we found three different data sheets on the website for the same charge controller for the same battery that had three different absorb voltage and absorb times. So obviously they've been modifying those as they go and they haven't been keeping up with getting rid of the old ones. So that's something that you want to pay attention to and that's why I said don't use my numbers. Even if you had a Fortress battery, don't use my numbers. Go get your own numbers in case the manufacturer has changed those numbers. So thank you guys for watching. Any questions, leave them down below. We'll leave a link to Midnight Solar down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.